Come, Jesus, come. Hey, what's up? What is up? Happy New Year to everyone listening. <laughs> right when this comes out, it is now officially 2024. Woo! Do us a big favor and in 2024, go ahead and like and subscribe to the Pantry Podcast wherever you listen or watch. That'll be a big, big win for us and for you. But welcome to the Pantry. Welcome, man. It has been an interesting into our year. This would be the first time that we've ever dropped two episodes in a month. Oh my goodness. No, yeah, we've never <laughs> missed an episode. And then this, this, well, not this year, but last year. Oh, yeah, last year. Last, last year, year, last year, year we, uh, 2023. Yeah. Yeah. In 2023, in December, we had, t- like, I got sick while you were in Colombia <laughs> and I just didn't release the episode we had. So everybody got it a week later. And then you came back from Colombia and then you had a week and then you got sick right after Christmas. And so we didn't put out a episode at Christmas. So here we are. (laughs) Here we are. And you know what? It's given me some time, though, to to take a break. (laughs) It's never the funnest break. Thank you, probably still hear it in me. I'll still try to get out. So if you hear a little cough here and there in in between talks, we'll edit some of it, but probably not all of it. So just deal with it. (laughs) That kind of rhyme. What? What? Okay. Anyways, no. Um. So as we're sitting here and we're thinking about the new year and we're thinking about all the things, man, I don't know how many times as the new year comes up every year, this is like almost every year. And I'm not trying to say or, or put any negative towards this, but as the new year starts to move in, these special dates and Christmas and new years and new, the new new year and all of these things, the one thing that starts to pop out a lot is come Jesus, come. Yeah. Oh Lord, he's coming. Oh, he's going to take us during this time frame. Oh, he's going to take us in the next couple of days. I've heard all of these in the last And if week. you haven't, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> but <laughs> but we decided to talk about are you rapture ready mm. or are you too rapture ready? Um, <laughs> as our 200th episode of the Pantry podcast, which is conveniently starting in 2024 yes. unexpected unexpectedly unexpectedly, unexpectedly. <laughs> i thought it was going to be two weeks ago but it's right now 200. and i think oh yeah what? yeah <laughs> I don't know, I know she's like oh what? yeah um but I, but i yeah. like this i like are we too rapture ready you know like are a- you too ra- rapture eager i guess i should Ooh, say see there's a good like one. i'm rapture ready like lord take us whenever right but at the <laughs> same time like are you pining for it so much that it's hard to do stuff. Are you pining for it so much that you don't care about all the lost people that would be completely screwed if it happened right now? Like those kind of thoughts, like right. what's the heart behind it? But also like, it is a very happy thing. The rapture is a very happy thing. Oh, Him yeah. coming for his Absolutely. saints is a beautiful, beautiful thing. So don't dread it. Don't ask for it to take longer than it's going to, but you know, that healthy balance. I think there's a healthy balance. And, and as I'm gonna go right back to the bread. Mm-hmm. <laughs> bread and 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 the the gro- growth of the bread and I'm can't come up with the word right now <laughs> rising uh, rising of the bread <laughs> and I'm using my <laughs> the, the yeast okay here we go yeast man we're, I'll get there we're guys. Pulling it I'm, out, I'm, guys I'm pulling it out guys we're pulling this out right now but no like when you have a bread and you're building it with the yeast and if you have too much yeast it's not good but if you have too little yeast it's not good either right. but for that perfect loaf of bread mm-hmm. right. In other words, this perfect or this good mentality. Let's let's leave perfect out because I'm far from that. That'll trigger something. Ooh, that might trigger something. But, but using yeast can cause a whole other oh, that convo. Help. We're so not supposed to put yeast in our unleaven. But no, no, we My were using is, science analogies. We're using in the kitchen. We're using kitchen analogies. Today. Yes. Okay, too much salt. Oh, there's another one that someone could get us on to. You got to have lots of salt. Where the salt? Right, where the salt is. But look, none of y'all are those people. So, (laughs) (laughs) But it's just funny. I think we deal with this. But I'm I'm watching, and I think where I thought we should sit down and have a conversation, and you also thought this as well, is when we start to see the unhealthy side of this. Um, Okay, and I've caught myself in this. And let's Mm -hmm. just be, let's bring out some transparency and some honesty. Life is going hard. Things are going rough. You know, my, maybe I'm not where I want to be or my mental capacity isn't where I should be. And all of a sudden I'm calling, Jesus, just take me home. I just want to go home. Okay, no, I, I mean, right, I do. Yeah. I do, but is my heart 
in the right place. Yeah. You know, we see this with the Apostle Paul when he's sitting there and he's talking in um, Philippians 1. I really like when he's talking here because he's 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 facing this dilemma. He's he's uh, this is an understanding to this dilemma. It's really interesting in verse 21 for where it says for to me to live in Christ and to die is gain. But if I live on in the flesh, this will mean fruit for my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I cannot tell for I am hard pressed between the two. Having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better, nonetheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. And as I start thinking about this, because I'm hearing this, and I'm hearing a lot of it now in Christians, and with things getting harder and things getting more difficult, and usually they tie it in with the days of Noah, and God, just come take us, just get rid of us. You know, we, we just pull us off of this cesspool that, that's called earth right now because we just don't want to be here no more. It's just so horrible, and it's so wicked, and so evil. This is, sorry, I'm just ad No, I mean, you're on Twitter, or I'm sorry, X, you're on X. <laughs> And you, you read a lot of tweets. <laughs> you get to see a window into a lot of people's hearts, or at least in that moment. But, you know, I think that that's something that – there's a lot of psalms where it's talking about how our soul is thirsting for right. God and his ways. So, again, not to make light of pining for him and wanting to be with him and desiring him. That is a godly thing. But like you're saying right now, the heart issue that drives you down into a pit of despair and depression that actually keeps you from being useful and maybe makes that bitterness set in where you don't, you lack love for the lost and you're okay getting snatched up right this minute. And you're asking for him to come faster just for you, right? Because your day or your life is hurting, but at least you get to, go to eternity with him and so there's always this heart check right and and i think that's where i live because all of a sudden i start thinking of the lost i start thinking of like hold on and i get it it's going to be the perfect will and he's going to come when he needs to come and there's going to be lost people that that don't make the cut and 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 i completely understand this and and like michelle saying it's not something that i i i just think crazily about and think like just one way But no, I start thinking of them Mm -hmm. and I start thinking like, wait, hold on. Could I share one more message or could I share, you know, with one more person or or maybe one person sees something in in our community of believers or in the church that says, hold on, who is this Jesus? Right. And I think what really got me going on this is we're starting into the teen ministry, right? Yeah. And I start thinking of the young people. Okay. We're talking at from 16 to 18 kids who can now make a decision right yeah and i start thinking about them and okay am i over emotional i don't know but i'm saying i start to think about being able to be light that shines that god has told us to do be a light to this world right Mm -hmm. be the salt of the earth you know make this look good like don't make it look like oh well we have no hope because so let's come come give me jesus hold on a second That's not what he told us to do. He told us to come forth and be victorious in the positions that we are now. And therefore, when I sit there and I say, okay, I want to be victorious. I want to share this message of the gospel. Then I need to be very careful on why I want to walk away from this earth and why I want Jesus to take me away. Yeah. I think on the other side of that, too, is the people who aren't ready at all. And when you talk about teens... I noticed this when I first came, I was very excited that the Lord had saved me, but I was also a little sad because I came to Christ at 23 Mm. and I was single and I had no children. And these are things I had wanted before Christ. And now I had the godly desire to have a godly husband and to raise children that would love the Lord. And to think that maybe I wouldn't get a chance to do those things before he came. I had to grapple with that, mm. right? And I know that there's people in their 30s, in their 40s, even in their, in their 50s that are grappling with, well, what if he comes before I see grandkids or before I get married for the first time or before this or before that? What if he comes before so-and-so is saved? Um, Ooh, that's and a then, lot of what if. That's a lot of Ooh. what ifs that people grapple with because when we're right. asking, are you rapture ready? It's not just, are you so rapture ready? like to a fault that you're now depressed about being on this planet or is it also that you really kind of deep down don't want him to come you you really you're you're kind of praying take longer and you're not praying that to save souls but because you want to have a baby you want to have a spouse 
you want to have that dream house you want to knock off your bucket list you know it goes both ways kind of and when i think about teens with quote unquote their whole life ahead of them sometimes when they hear about the rapture they're not that excited they're Mm. a little they might be a little more even keel they might be like oh that's really cool but they're imagining the rapture happen when they're like ready to go at 70 you know not necessarily all of them are ready to roll out right now some are right right? because being a teen is tough but so the question being like rather than focusing on you know the rapture focusing on our heart and the state of our heart because what our heart is pining for reveals some things Mm, maranatha Mm. No, seriously, yes. Mary now the Lord yes. come. I'll sit here all day and say, because right. I want it to be glorified, though. Yes, I, I, I don't want it to be solidified. <laughs> I'm gonna put it there because we soil things all the time, people. We do, we soil it all the time with our own thoughts, own feelings. Michelle was all over playing. I wait, hold on. I'm a Christian now. I need a Christian husband. Hold on. I want, I want to raise Christian kids. Hold on. That good thoughts. Look, yeah. You live in it. He right. didn't come. Exactly. And guess what? Here we are. Yeah. And uh, but but it's so it's so cool if we can just dial that in mm-hmm. and, and sit there and say, hey, you know what? I want to see Jesus, but I also want to see people saved. I want to see the most wicked people saved. Mm-hmm. I think that that was one of the hardest things to grapple with in life is is wanting to see wicked people saved. Um, so many testimonies out there of people who were just utterly wicked mm-hmm. but found jesus and then of course then other people come in they're like did they really and i'm just like mm-hmm. oh let's just have some hope yeah. let's have, have some hope i'm not saying yeah. that the look i'm not that guy that jumps on here and says we're gonna you know we're gonna procreate with so many babies and christian babies that we're gonna change the world i don't that's not me right. i know where this road is going i know where we're headed i know the direction we're headed in mm-hmm. but you know what why can't we just be happy along the way <laughs> Right. Why? Like, let me let me raise some for the team. Right. But at the but at the same time, like I think of it, maybe when it comes to the rapture, it might seem a little more ab- abstract. But if I can go right back to Christmas, it just happened. Yeah. And kids, you know, we don't know the day or the hour the rapture is going to happen. Right? right. But we know that God, the father does. Mm. And so someone knows a date. It's on a calendar, right? And so if we had Christmas on the calendar and then you have a toddler who doesn't really have a sense of time but knows it's coming because you're telling them that Christmas is coming and it's coming soon, you could have the kid who one day is like so, like, can we celebrate Christmas now? Can we celebrate Christmas now? And it's because they just want the gifts. Mm. But then you have the other kid or maybe they're the adult that they just love the lead up. There's so much to do before Christmas. There are so many different light shows to see, so many different malls to walk through, so many different Christmas events to happen. They're okay waiting for Christmas. They're excited for those gifts, but there's so much to do beforehand, right? You can be in either one, but I think that the thing is like the healthy thing Mm. is like, okay, there's stuff that I can do. It's not Christmas yet. There's stuff I can do. I'm not going to dread Christmas. I'm not going to try and push Christmas back. I'm not going to try and pray Christmas forward. I'm going to be content knowing Christmas is guaranteed to happen. There's stuff I can do before then. And there's brilliant stuff on that day that comes, right? And and dancing in in that expectation of a, of a fulfilled mm. promise. You know, Jesus is the reason for the season, mm-hmm. but then Jesus is the reason for all seasons. Yes. <laughs> and every so season. every season, every day that yes. we walk through, every day that we move forward in, that is the key. What does Jesus have for me today? Mm-hmm. I always love um, the the prayer, you know, is where it's like a kingdom on earth, right? Mm-hmm. As it is in heaven. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's, it's not saying that we have to wait. It's not saying that, you know, the complete 100 unadulterated satisfaction will be that day we, we sit in our glorified bodies. Yeah. But one of the things that he wants us to, to stay away from is defeat mm-hmm. or taking a mind frame that walks away from his victory that's already happened. Yeah. I think one, I was reading something the other day and it's talking about promises and it's talking mm-hmm. about, um, 
walking in these promises, right? And I think a lot of people sometimes are still looking for this promise. They're like, they're, they're like, well, wait, there's still more, there's still more, there's still more, there's still more. And God's like, wait, <laughs> I've already given you everything that you need. In other words, this trust and this belief and this walking in this promise and understanding that, you know what? Hey, I will find joy nowhere else other than in Christ. I will find hope nowhere other than in Christ. And so when I'm sitting there in this promise and these ideas, right? And I'm like, am I already satisfied or am I still yearning for satisfaction? And so I can sit there in a mentality of being satisfied or I can walk and be unsatisfied all the time and saying, Jesus, give me more. And it's like, he's like, oh, I've already gave it. Learn how to walk in it That's so, so that we can be successful. <laughs> Yes. No, exactly. No, amen to that. I think that that's, that's really the mindset that we're encouraging you to do. be rapture ready by just having a heart to experience him mm, now. Amen. You know, it's a healthy thing to look forward to, but there's a lot more to this, mm. to this walk than just the rapture. And so as you start out the new year, just remember mm. that there's so much that he can use you for right now. Amen. amen. All right. Amen. That's what I agree. Yeah, agree. agree. We concur. We concur. Happy New Year to everybody <laughs> listening. Remember that you can download our free Devo Jesus Not Junk Food at thepantrypodcast.com and you can support us and our pastor friend, Pastor Jackson in Kenya at patreon.com slash thepantrypodcast. So until next time. Bye. Bye.